Well, this is, uh, this is the time in our service that we celebrate communion, and the Lord's Supper is a remembrance, remembrance of what Christ did for us. We are so blessed each week when we celebrate together to be reminded of his love and also to be reminded of the joy that is ours and the peace we have with him because of his finished work at the cross. Our passage this morning to help us remember Jesus is Romans 5, 1 and 2. If you don't have a Bible, there are some men that uh, are up front. They're going to walk down the aisles, uh, hold up your hand, and they'd be happy to put one in your hands. And if you don't own a Bible, please take one. Take this one with you as a gift from Grace Bible Church. So let's pray. Father God, how great thou art. You would choose to send your son to suffer for depraved sinners like us. You would give him the heart to willfully, obediently, and joyfully go to the cross, suffer a death beyond imagination, so that we could have life and be restored to you forever. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. So let's read Romans 5. Verses 1 and 2. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. We exult in hope of the glory of God. The phrase in verse 1, having been justified by faith, Summarize, summarizes most of Paul's discussion in Romans 3.21 through the end of chapter 4. This is concerning justification by faith alone and not by works. And the word therefore at the beginning of this verse is the connecting word to what Paul wrote in the preceding verses in Romans 4. In Romans 4.25, God's entire redemptive plan is summarized. It says, He who was delivered over because of our transgressions and was raised because of our justification. Christ died for our sins and was raised again for our justification. These two statements are inseparably bound together. Without his death, there is no basis for pardoning of sin. Without his resurrection, there would be no proof of Jesus' power over sin and death. So what is justification? Well, Wayne Gruden defines it this way. Justification is an instantaneous legal act of God in which he thinks of our sins forgiven and Christ's righteousness as belonging to us, and he declares us righteous in his sight. This message is so simple, and it is clear to all who will hear. The power of the message is available to all who will reach out to him in faith. There are six significant truths and six or six and six great realities that are inherent to justification and salvation. And they are peace with God, standing in grace, hope of glory, assurance of love, certainty of deliverance, and joy in God. Three of these are found in Romans 5. Verses 1 and 2. And the first one is, we have peace with God. In our prior relationship, our prior relationship is described best as we were enemies, enemies of God. 
So before we can truly appreciate what it means to have peace with God, we must remember that as a human being, in our natural state, we were born an enemy of God. Every man, woman, and child on the planet, apart from salvation, is at enmity with God. Being an enemy of God is not to be taken lightly. It's not our attitude, and it's not a feeling. It is that we don't have a relationship with God. And without a relationship, God is not for you. He is against you. The psalmist tells us that God is an honest judge. He is angry with the wicked every day. Whether unbelievers are conscious of it or not, I certainly was not. They may think they respect God, admire God, and even worship and believe in God. But the truth is that the natural man cannot understand the things of God because they are spiritually appraised and apart from believing the gospel of Jesus Christ, they are at war with God. God is at war with the unredeemed sinner. An unredeemed man is at war with God. But for the redeemed man, the justified man, God's anger has been satisfied with the perfect sacrifice of Christ on our behalf. Now we enjoy a permanent peace, and we are secure because of our relationship with God. Justification by faith in Jesus Christ establishes a new relationship between the believer and holy God. What does it mean to have peace with God? means the war is over. God is no longer fighting against us. He is no longer angry with us. He is no longer promising judgment or hell. To have peace with God means to be in a relationship with God in which all hostility caused by sin has been removed. Peace. Is such a great word. It is rich with meaning. It speaks of the new relationship that exists between God and those to turn to him in faith. God took the initiative in pursuing peace with us by sending his son to die in our place. And I am often reminded that on my own, even in my best efforts, on my best days, I could not create peace with God. The second great reality is in verse 2. Verse 2 says, Through whom also we have obtained our introduction by faith into this grace in which we stand. Through whom refers to Christ. And it is through his work on the cross through his atonement, and through his consistent, never-ending, never-failing intercessory work on our behalf, we have obtained our introduction, or more simply put, our access into grace. We are standing in God's grace. The Greek word for stand is histeme, which means to abide in or continue in. This is simply saying that to stand in his grace, we are presently abiding in and will continue in this secure and permanent position in God's family forever. The third reality that is mentioned in Romans 5, 1 and 2 is we exult in the hope of glory of God. The word exult in this passage means to rejoice. It is one of the highest levels of joy known. It's not an emotional joy, but it is one that you have confidence in 
that it will last forever. The believer's joy is not simply something that they hope to experience in the future, but it is a present reality, even in the times of trials and distress. Hope in this passage means to have confidence in God's promises. Without the promises of God stated in his word, we as believers would have no hope. MacArthur says, the word hope in the New Testament contains no uncertainty. It speaks of something that is certain, but not yet realized. 1 Timothy 1.1 says that Jesus is our hope. He is our peace. He is the source of our grace. Our hope is in the sufficiency of Christ. Our future glory is based on him, as is everything else. So we have confidence in knowing that we are at peace with God. We have confidence in knowing that we stand in his grace. We have confidence in his promises, knowing that these things are true all because of the work of Christ. We have no fear of our future. However, if you are here today and your hope is not in Christ, you have every reason to fear. Please know that we are glad that you are here. But you need to know that there is no hope, there is no joy, there is no peace without a relationship with Christ. And if you should die today, you are destined to be eternally separated from God and will be forever tormented in hell. Let today be the day of your salvation. Repent and believe in Jesus. Pray and seek his forgiveness. Pray the words that are in Psalm 51 to him. Be gracious to me, O God, according to your loving kindness, according to the greatness of your compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Against you and you only I have sinned and done what is evil in your sight so that you are justified when you speak and blameless when you judge. Blot out all my iniquities. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. We want you to know that any one of the elders would be happy to talk with you after the service about what it means to have a relationship with Christ. If your hope is not in Christ, then please allow the communion elements to pass you by. And believers... Uh, Let's examine our hearts and rejoice in remembering the saving grace of Christ's work on the cross. Please use this time to meditate on his goodness and to acknowledge any unconfessed sin. Men, come in service, and I'll be back in a few minutes to close this time in prayer.